clever and I'm able to answer two questions with one demo. Phil Huffer just bought his Posca pen, and then all of a sudden, I tell everybody, this is the greatest pen. Do not fear, Phil. They're both great. Now, the difference. The pit pen is translucent. That means that when I use it, it's going to cover over the color, but you're still going to be able to see the color underneath. When I use the Posca pen, this is opaque, which means that when I put this down on the paper, it's going to cover up whatever is underneath and become bright white. They both have their uses. Luckily, in the next segment, I'm going to be able to show you both pens in action. video because it was getting so long I didn't get a chance to really go over the gold colors with you guys and creating the gold now I've done several videos on how to create gold each time I use a different pencil it changes it a bit and I've sort of come up with a group of pencils that mix and matching any of them is going to give you gold so instead of giving you just a recipe which I know I gave you three already today I'm going to give you my gold process and this way you could take it from there and make your own gold combinations. Any of these pencils will work. Your gold will look beautiful. I'm going to start my demo out with some dark umber and this is, I'm not going to be following the recipes that I gave you. I'm going to be doing this um, off the top of my head just because I have all these color pencils to show you that you can really mix and match any of them. So I'm starting on the edges and I'm just going down and creating some, I'm creating some darkened uh, shadows on it. And because this is grayscale, it's kind of easy, but you can do the same thing on something that's not grayscale. It works out the same. And this is gold material. Um, coming up, Cream in the Coffee, my Vaughn, asked me to help him with some folds of cloth. And uh, this isn't it, Vaughn. I'm doing a different video on that. Now, she doesn't have any highlights on the bottom, but I always, when doing gold, do highlights going in the same direction. Okay, now my next pencil is going to be Goldenrod. I'm going along with the brown shadows because I'm going to want that blended into itself. I'm going to get a little bit brighter, and I'm going to choose to use some canary yellow. And I'm going to put that in the center. I've decided to go with a little bit of artichoke. And that's just to tone everything down a bit because the canary yellow is so bright. The artichoke has a little bit of yellow green in it. So it always looks good with gold. I've got out the pit pen and I'm going to make it bright right in the middle. Now this is the translucent one and it's the brush so you can get really really fine lines with it. Okay I'm going to give that a few seconds to dry before I do anything else with it. And I'm going to just put a little bit of black underneath here just to define this area and help shade it down. And then underneath this fruit or this berry necklace. 
Okay, now that this is all dry, it only takes a few moments with the pit pen because it's an India ink, not a paint. And right in the center, I'm going to add the Posca. And that's in the center of the white, the India ink. So it gives it sort of like a faded look. Okay. I'm going to give that about 10 minutes to dry, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, shade that down. While I was waiting for the Posca to dry, I added a gradient of burnt okra across the bottom onto the body. It's only bottom layer. So this is already done and dried. Now I'm going to fade it up. And I'm using my golden rod to fade that. The Posca is still a little bit soft. If I waited another oh, about 20 minutes, it would have been fine. But that's okay. The pit pen really did its job and what I'm trying to do is get rid of those hard lines and just leave the highlight very soft and in the middle now if you end up covering it up too much you can always go back and add a second layer of pit pen I want this really dark like dark gold I'm not looking for a a light gold because I'm going to match it up down there and I'm going to take this area with the dark umber and I'm going to start working to darken it up putting a little bit of shadow underneath I'm going to add gray in there but I just want that darkened with a little bit of umber umber sort of has a gray in it also, if you examine umber, it's a grayer brown, where the burnt okra is definitely a red brown. It's a burnt okra is lighter than burnt sienna, and I think a little bit more orangey. And all the umbers and the okras, they're all... They all match up with each other. That whole group of mineral colors, the earthen tones, you can mix and match them to your heart's desire. You're not gonna, you're not gonna ruin it. The last color I'm gonna add down here, after the umber, the, so it was umber, dark umber, the burnt okra. Now I'm gonna add in a little crimson lake, which is like a dark red because I want it to blend in and look cohesive with the top. And of course, as soon as I start videotaping, my dog wants to go out. Shannon Wooders is requesting that I put up the order of the pencils that I keep them in from the Prisma set. The problem with that is I don't know really where to put it. I can string them along in the video, but that's difficult. So I'm going to try putting it into the description box below. It might have to read out instead of a list, like read out like a paragraph because they don't give you that much room. But I did want to show you what I did with my pencils and the order that I keep them in. I have a 150 pencil storage I got off of Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. And I keep my pencils here in order. Now, I can get to a pencil in seconds. I know this book so well. And what makes this book really good is that I can tell when a pencil is getting small and that I can replace it in the book. And... That's the 150. Now, I did something else to it. When you move a pencil, 
I have the pencil number written down to the slot that it belongs to. And this also allows me to find it really easy if one goes missing. I know exactly which pencil it is without having to drive myself nuts trying to figure out which pencil I am missing. So this has worked out for me for years. I've had this book uh, probably since I started pencil drawing and it's lasted me this long and it goes everywhere with me. This is Mina's real cage. She doesn't live in a Barbie doll cage. She has a regular reptile cage. She's got a reptile heater. She's got a rock cave for security at night. And she's got a climbing branch. The floor is glass right now. As soon as I finish filming this, I usually have paper towels down. That's a better way of keeping babies is on paper towels because when they do eat, they sometimes eat the substrate because their tongues are sticky. You don't have to worry about her living in a Barbie cage. I'm back to the Misty picture and I'm starting this off well, first of all, I was going to do that practice picture, and I decided against it. I really didn't need it, and it was a lot of extra work. So I'm just going for it on the good paper. Uh, no practice. <laughs> so, um, so I started off with a little bit of gray, and that was a 50% uh, cool gray. And there I got my gray out again. In between, I'm adding black hairs. Now, I'm watching the reference picture very closely. Different ways the tufts of hair move and grow, that's what I'm trying to follow. Now, of course, you're not going to be perfect. I'm trying to get as close to it as I possibly can so that when I do the last bit, which is way in the future, I will have at least the color hues that I need in the right spots. Now, remember, this is bottom layer and nothing is permanent. So a lot of the colors that I'm going to be using on the bottom are actually colors that I'm using to create other colors later on. And I know that sounds really advanced because how do you know what you're going to do later on? But I, I do. When you're working with like dog fur or really any fur, there's two things that you're concerned with. One is the undercoat, which could be a completely different color than your overcoat, especially with like German Shepherds and Misty, who is a mixed dog of all different origins, Papillon and um, Chihuahua. I think there was, there's all sorts of things that were in her. I think we genetically tested her out with four different dogs because we wanted to know what exactly she was. I'm switching back and forth from my earth tones and the colors that I'm choosing to use, I've got a burnt okra, uh, goldenrod, I have sienna brown, putty beige, chocolate, white, 10% uh, gray because a lot of the shading in Misty doesn't have it in the Prismacolor set the exact color, but that's no big deal. I can create the color that I want. Now, she had a lighter shade than Putty Gray. So if I mix Putty Gray with the white, I'll be tinting it. Add in a little 10% uh, French Gray in there, or Warm Gray, actually. French Gray would have been fine, too. Warm Gray is fine. Add that all together and I'm going to create a beige and that was the beige that I needed for certain areas on her ears. She had some really light fur and that's where I was adding in more of the white. Uh, this picture is going to take me a long time. Filming it at 150 speed which is one and a half times normal speed because really you would be here watching me. I'd probably lose most of you to slumber if you were watching me put in every single hair. So again, I say that a lot of the colors that I'm putting now are just base colors that I'm going to create other colors with. Now, the reason I'm using black, and I don't usually use black, is because I want 
a lot of her undertone to have the black hairs. And when you're creating hairs, you want to sort of create the hair and then blend it up. Then it becomes a little bit blurry and then you add another coat of hair. Then you blend that up and it becomes bl a little bit less blurry. By the time you're done with the top layer, you've got so many different blurred out layers of undercoat and that it becomes very rich and deep. So it does take a while. This is not something that if you're going to take on this project, it's not something that you're going to do overnight. Work on little pieces. Now I'm working on the ear. The ear could take me a week to do from start to finish. Most likely I will do it in layers. I can't imagine me working till fully finished in one area and moving on. My brain doesn't work that way. So I'll probably do a lot of the undercoat colors and then come back and do the next layer of colors. But I am right now working in just the ear area. It does become easier, okay, as you move on the picture. Once you get some landmarks going in there, uh, you could find it on your picture. There's a way to do it using a grid method. And I haven't taught you guys the grid method. It's basically because I don't normally use it. It's something that not every artist take to. It is very helpful, and eventually I will show you this grid method, but not on this picture, because <laughs> this is a personal picture, and it's for my son-in-law for Christmas. My, aunt, my daughter actually saw it. Uh, this is for her husband, and I did end up showing it to her just to get her, you know, quote, quote, approval on it. If it's something that, you know, and of course she loved it. She thinks it's great. So this is going to be his personal gift. Normally with the couples, because we have a lot of quote, quote, couples now, I'll get them a big gift. And for that couple, I bought them a, and I already bought it, a bar. It was something that they had said that they had wanted. And when they were talking about buying it, I had piped up and said, no, don't. I'll get it to you for Christmas. So they were like, okay, they were going to buy it right on the spot. And I stopped them. But I ended up, <laughs> I'm such a wuss. I ended up buying it for them anyways. So they've got their Christmas gift. So I put in my 10 minutes of video time and I will cut this off now. We'll wait for the next one and we'll just keep on going. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.